أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء أشرف المرسلين One of the greatest miracles of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was the splitting of the moon This is something that showed the world that he was no doubt a true prophet Now as a Muslim we believe in this uh, as we believe in some great miracles of other prophets like Jesus uh, peace be upon him and Moses splitting the ocean and so on and what is the evidence as a Muslim is the verses from the Quran in Surah Qamar first two ayat these two verses clearly state that this happened now some people they say oh this didn't happen this will happen closer to the day of judgment and so on but that is incorrect as you can see on your screen the great scholar of Islam Ibn Kathir in his tafsir and explanation he wrote that this happened during the time of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him as has been mentioned in the Quran and also in Ahadith Mutawatira in numerous narrations uh, with authentic Asanid that are Sahiha authentic uh, chains of narrators as has been authentically reported from Ibn Mas'ud uh, and he mentions the narration and he says that, the, that this is something that has been agreed upon by the scholars of Islam that the moon was split during the time of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and this was from the great miracle of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him so from the Quran itself from the Mutawatir Sahih Ahadith and from the agreement of the scholars of Islam, we know this happened. But what about the, the skeptic? What about the atheist? What about the agnostic? What about somebody who says that this is an extraordinary uh, yani event and this type of a, a claim that is an extraordinary claim requires extraordinary evidence? Okay, so this video is really for them. Um, let's talk about where did the moon come from? As you see, uh, the moon that we see in front of us you know, at night, uh, out, bright, where, is, where are the origins of the moon? So there are some theories. Um, and NASA and all these organizations that go out and, and they research, they have no eyewitness accounts. But one of the theories is that there was a giant impact. This hypothesis has been put forward that a Mars-sized planet called Thea crashed into the earth and what you will see is a picture of your art, artist's uh, imagination renderation of what it might have looked like obviously we have no video we don't have a, a twitter approved youtube video to post of it but nasa and others have said that there was a giant impact that hit the earth and debris from the earth came out from this impact and and formed over you know, long periods of time, you know, mostly about 4.5 billion years ago, and it formed into the moon that we have today. Okay, now this is an extraordinary claim as well, without any actual evidence. What are some of the indications that this may have happened? Well, they said, well, the, the moon has an orbit kind of like the Earth and its core and this, and they found many traces, even though we have no such crater that we can point to on Earth that where this impact happened and so on. But they found traces on the moon and things, and they, they deduced this. And this is taught to us in, in, in university classes and in high schools and so on. Even though we have no eyewitness account, we have no actual physical evidence and so on. Things like this are accepted with certain evidences even if they are not something that we can play on a video uh, on, on our computer screens right for example in history we're told about the seven wonders of the ancient world seven marvelous extraordinary wonders that were there in the ancient world one of them is still standing and that's the pyramids in giza so that one we can go look at no 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 doubt but the other six we have no actual evidence for um, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, for example, which would be in current day Turkey. Uh, but in reality, uh, there is no physical evidence of them at all. So why do we teach them in history? Why do we accept them? Because we do have some oral traditions. We don't have any written first-hand reports of them. We have no physical evidence of them. But based on many oral traditions, 
most historians would agree that they did exist. Uh, the temple of uh, Arithmius, um, the statue of Zeus in Olympia, Greece. Again, none of that stands today. We have no first-hand eyewitness accounts, but from oral traditions about having seen these places, we believe they existed. The lighthouse of Alexandria, something insane. Look at the picture that you have. And these are all artist renderations because we don't have any actual pictures. We didn't have cell phones or Canon cameras to go out and take pictures of them. Um, but based on oral traditions, we do believe that these extraordinary uh, structures existed. Um, the, the famous uh, Molosseum, uh, the Colossus of Rhodes, all of these extraordinary uh, historic accounts have no eyewitness. So having said that, we, we, we would deduce that even oral traditions are accepted to believe in some very extraordinary claims. But the splitting of the moon is no doubt more amazing. It's something amazing. It's something that is not like a, a huge building or something like this. So we would want some really extraordinary proof. And no doubt, the splitting and uniting of the moon in a, in a single night is something amazing, something that is very extraordinary, something that it's not a naturally occurring event. Uh, we as Muslims are not claiming that this was some kind of a natural event, that you know some asteroid just came and hit the moon. No, this was a miracle. This was a sign from the creator of the universe that this man, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a true prophet of God. So... Is it even scientifically possible? That's the first question that we're going to address tonight. Is it scientifically possible that a moon can merge, break or merge and then become one moon? Can it even happen? Well, uh, according to NASA, and I'm putting a link to NASA's website, uh, many of these pictures that, that are being shown are from NASA themselves. I'm not, they're not doctored, they're not edited, they're not photoshopped. These are NASA pictures. Now, I am not claiming that NASA is, is in agreement with a lot of these things. What I am showing is what their research showed, and you can look at it on their website. So NASA sent a rover to Saturn, uh, Cassini, and spent 20 years, uh, it was sent out in 1997, uh, the pictures that you're looking at are from that rover that it went out to look at the moons of Saturn uh, and look at Saturn itself and spent 20 years in space and in 2017 it crashed onto the surface of Saturn and it's destroyed. But those images we still have. So let's look at some of these images of Lepidus. Lepidus is one of the moons of Saturn and if you look at it you see this ridge that NASA has shown. This is a, some, a mystery. They wondered why is there such a ridge, as you can see in the picture, that goes all the way across that moon. And why is it that the surface is so different on different sides? Well, according to NASA, one of the accepted theories is that this was an impact, two moons, or a body that separated at a certain time, crashed in, and as you can see in artists' Uh, rendering of it to make the moon today and 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 after scanning the surface this is what they have come up with that two separate bodies came together and today it's one moon so can you say is it possible no doubt it's possible but that is not our moon right that is something in Saturn okay so let's talk about our moon if you look at the picture on your screen today, and this again, you can find all of these on NASA's website itself, and I've put a link in the description. You'll have to search around there. Um, the moon has two, our moon, the Earth's moon, has two very different faces. One that is facing towards the Earth, and one that is facing away from the Earth, and they're very different. Well, why is that? One of the theories that's put forward by NASA themselves is that this is because there was a merging, and this is now the picture you have on your screen. This is also an artist's rendering of a theory put forward by NASA scientists that there was a merging of two moons into one in our moon, of the Earth's moon. So what does this tell you? That no doubt there, it is very possible 
that our moon has been merged back together. And one of the evidences that you can find for this, as you will see in the picture now, are these ridges, which are called rima, rima meaning uh, grooves, right? Uh, and there is the rima Artadias, which is 300 kilometers. In fact, all across the moon, in different places, you will find these cracks. Well, what causes them? There are many theories. One of them being that, as we mentioned before, that the two moons that collided caused these ridges. One of them being their volcanic uh, tunnels and so on. I'm not claiming that NASA knows the answer, but they have taken these pictures and put forward these theories as well. So, how can we be sure or that how did, did the moon ever split and come back together? Well, I mean, the only way we could really know is if we had eyewitness accounts. Wouldn't that be amazing if we actually had eyewitness accounts? Well, we do. <laughs> we do have eyewitness accounts. Let me begin with those. There is, uh, during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, there is an event that happened where the people of Mecca, the, the non-believers of Mecca, challenged the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and said, if you're a true prophet, split this moon, split it in two, and bring it back together. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told them, that if I do this, will you believe? They said, yes. He said, okay. And he prayed to God, to the Creator, to Allah. And Allah split the moon. And eyewitnesses saw this. And I know this is an amazing, extraordinary event. It's, that's why we call it a miracle. And it came back together the same night. Now, an, a, a skeptic would ask, okay, well, who saw this? Obviously the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But and you could say, well, he's the one that's performing this. So, you know, who else saw it? Well, we have in his historic documentation, in a book called Sahih al-Bukhari, we have the narration from Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud is one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And in the narration that is on your screen now, he reports this to have occurred as well. Now, you could say, okay, well, who's Ibn Mas'ud? Ibn Mas'ud, we know exact details about this eyewitness. What was his name? His name was Abdullah. What was his father's name? His father's name was Mas'ud. What was his mother known as? Um Abd. Did he have siblings? Yes. For example, he had a brother named Utbah. Okay. Was he married? Yes. His wife was named Zainab. Did he have children? Yes. We know all of those details. We know who his son was. We know who his father was. We know he was born in 594. We know that he died in 653. So this person who was an eyewitness and his credibility, his, his abilities, his history is well known. Okay, but who did he tell this event to? Well, as you can see on your screen, he told it to Abu Ma'mar. Well, who's Abu Ma'mar? His name is Abdullah. Well, who's his father? His father is a man named Sakhbara. Well, who did he tell it to? He told it to a man named Ibrahim al-Nakhai. Ibrahim? Who is Ibrahim al-Nakhai? He is the son, his name is Ibrahim, his father's name is Yazid. Well, who's his, fa his grandfather? His, father, his grandfather's name is Qais. Well, who did he tell it to? He told it to Suleiman. Well, who is Suleiman? Suleiman ibn uh, Mahran al-A'mash. So you see, the entire community that heard this event, the chain of narrators are all well known to us. All the way to Imam Bukhari, and a Tirmidhi and other historians that wrote down this event. Not only do we know who those narrators are, we even know how reliable were they in their memorization, how trustworthy were they, we have their entire biography. Okay, now already we have more eyewitness accounts than for the hanging uh, gardens of Babylon or uh, the lighthouse of Alexander, meaning that we actually know the person, we know their history who physically saw it. So you could say that if such an extraordinary event happened, why is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the only witness? Well, he's not. 
We have more eyewitnesses. Who are they? Let's name more. Jubair ibn Mut'im. Well, who was Jubair ibn Mut'im? He was somebody uh, who was a companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But he became a Muslim and 628 uh, at the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. So that would mean that before the migration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from Mecca to Medina, which was around 622, he was a non-Muslim. So he was from Mecca, and as a non-Muslim, he witnessed this account, and he has an eyewitness account that is on your screen. Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, Imam Tirmid in his Jamia, authentic narration, where he also says that I witnessed it, I saw that during the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the moon split and came back together. So now you have another witness, and we have the same details about him and everybody that he reported to. Who was his father? It was Mut'im ibn Adi. Um, who, did he have a son? Yes. One of his sons was Nafi' ibn Jubair. When did he die? 679. Uh, so, with all of that clear detail, we have another eyewitness. First, that Abdullah ibn Masood, who was a Muslim already, and the other, Jubair, who was not a Muslim at that time, that later accepted Islam. Okay, well, so you got two. How many else can you, can you give us? Many more. Hudayf ibn Yaman. Hudayf ibn Yaman, he was also a companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We have the exact same details, father, mother, children, where he lived, how, he, how was, good was his memory, what kind of a person was he, what he did. All of that detail is present. And Abu Nu'aym and Al-Bayhaqi and others have mentioned his narration. So this is also, it's on your screen. He was also an eyewitness to the account. More, let's give you more. Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik, the interesting thing about him, and he's born in 612 and he dies in 711 and he's from Medina and he in Sahih al-Bukhari he also witnesses this event so that means the people of Medina were also witnesses to this event okay Abdullah ibn Abbas also another witness authentic uh, you know we have Abdullah ibn Umar who was the son of Umar ibn Khattab famous companion also an authentic narration um, now some of them, they are physical witnesses and there are other companions who were too young. So they asked the people of Mecca who witnessed it and, and got the information from them. Many, many, many reports. We can go on. But a very important report from eyewitnesses is what's reported by Ibn Kathir in Bidaya wa Nihaya, in one of the famous books of Islamic history called Bidaya wa Nihaya. It is also reported by Abu Nu'aym and it's also reported by Ibn Sayyid al-Nas. In this narration, it lists non-Muslims who were eyewitnesses. So we've already given you six, seven of, of the Muslims uh, or, or those that became Muslim after this event that witnessed it. But now I'm going to give you of non-Muslims. Who were they? Walid ibn Mughayra. We have his history as well. We have the famous Abu Jahl, whose actual name is Amr ibn Hisham. We have Al-As ibn Hisham. We have As ibn Wa'il. We have all of these people that were non-Muslims. Not just them. We have Al-Aswad uh, uh, ibn Abdul uh, Yaghuth. Uh, Yaghuth was one of the, uh, uh, the idols. And, and his father was named as the slave of that idol. He was a non-Muslim Al-Aswad here. Uh, Al-Aswad ibn Muttalib. Uh, Zama'a ibn Al-Aswad. Uh, another ibn Al-Harith. These eight mushrikeen, polytheists, that were there, they were the ones that challenged the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and said, if you are a true prophet, split this moon. They are witnesses in this narration that the moon split. Now, this is very important because these are opponents. These are enemies. If the moon didn't split, they would be the first one to come out and say, you know what, we put this challenge and it didn't happen. But they were all eyewitnesses, even as enemies, that the moon did split. Ibn Kathir had this in Bidaya and Nihaya, and I put the reference and the and the scan of the of the book. Uh, this is in Arabic, obviously, on this on the screen. Al Hafid Abu Qasim Al Tabrani, uh, the famous scholar of, of history, uh, and others, uh, Al Qadi Ayyad, and others have mentioned uh, this narration. Now, Qadi Ayyad, one of the great scholars, historians in his book called Shifa, Sayyid Nas, uh, another great uh, scholar in his Uyun Al Athar. 
um, uh, and, and I've put the pictures on the, on the screen for you to know about these books. They mention a very important narration. And Ibn Kathir has this in Bidayah and Nihayah. That not only did these enemies of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, witness this, but they said that if this man, Muhammad, peace be upon him, has done some kind of magic, this is a trick, then he may have fooled us, but he will not have fooled the whole world. This is a skeptical question, and, and this is good. So they said, we will ask those caravans that were out to Yemen or to Syria, that were out, that were not in Mecca, whether they saw this event or not. And this is a question that somebody may have. If this event happened, why did people outside of Mecca not see it? Well, they did. In this narration, they asked the caravans that returned to Mecca and every single one of them confirmed that they also saw the moon split. So now this is very important because not only did the people of Mecca and a report out of Medina and, the, and proponents and opponents all see this as eyewitness accounts, but people that were outside in caravans in Arabia also saw the same event. And this is something that was mentioned in the Qur'an. If any of the polytheists, the, the mushrikeen, uh, the idol worshippers, saw this in the Qur'an and had not witnessed it, they would have objected to this. In the later time, this happened in Mecca, after the migration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to Medina, and then coming back at Fath of Mecca, the victory of Mecca, they would have said, hey, in your Qur'an, it says the moon split, but we didn't see it. But they didn't, because those Mushrikeen, those polytheists, they themselves saw the event as well. Now, as a skeptic, somebody who's agnostic, somebody who's going to question, they may say, okay, you have reports out of Mecca and Arabia and these caravans and Medina, but what about other parts of the world? If some great event like this happened, like the moon splits, then surely people in other parts of the world would have seen it. Well, um, first thing, it is unrealistic to expect that people would have seen it in the daytime, right? Because we can't see the moon in the daytime. So, you know, in parts of North America and South America and Europe, at, if you look at time, if it was the early part of the night, obviously this wasn't midnight or 2, 3 a.m. because uh, then people would have been asleep in those days. In the early part of the night, if the moon split, when the people were out, that means that in Europe and the United States, which obviously didn't exist at the time, but let's say North America and South America, it would be daytime. Night had not come. The sun begins its cycle from the east and sets in the west. So that means it would have been daytime. It is unrealistic to expect them to have seen it. Although if you go way back into Japan and Fiji and these areas, then it would have been probably getting very, very late. So most people would have been sleeping. But where is it likely that somebody could have seen it other than Arabia? Well, there could have been reports, no doubt, out of places like India. Because Al-Hind, which would be east of Arabia, it would still be, you know, the earlier part of the night. Okay, so why don't we have any reports from there? Well, we do. In the book called Qissatul Shakruti Farmat, um, which is a, in a manuscript format, the actual handwritten manuscript uh, in the British Library, um, there is evidence that has been uh, produced uh, that there was an account in India regarding this by a king of Kerala of southern India that saw this and later when he met Muslims, he became a Muslim. Now, you can question that report and I did as well. Uh, we want to make sure that we're looking at authentic, uh, well-established history. No problem. So what I did is I emailed the British Library and I asked them about this and I'm going to read off their email. So the inquiry I sent was to the British Library, which is at 96 uh, Euston Road, London, uh, NW1 to DB United Kingdom and I called them uh, and I emailed them and I requested information about this manuscript. Uh, the response I got is from the Asian Africa Reference Services India office that's a subdivision of that service from the uh, India office papers Oriental language publications and Oriental language manuscripts. They said, we are pleased to confirm that we do indeed hold in our collection a composite manuscript and the reference number is I.O. Islamic 2807. 
on portfolios 81 through 104 verso, there is an account of an Indian king having witnessed the splitting of the moon and converting to Islam. Uh, the manuscript is entitled Kissatul uh, Shakruti Firmad and is listed in our published catalogs with the following a fabulous account of the first settlement of Muhammadans in Malabar uh, under King Sakruti uh, Krenagro, uh, a contemporary of Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, who was converted to Islam by the miracle of the division of the moon. So, there is such a manuscript, but can you say this was a first-hand account? Can you say this is a historically acceptable account? Well, they are, the, the, the library uh, in, in, in Britain is not uh, qualified to do they, they can just tell you there is a manuscript. So what I did is I reached out to the National Digital Library of India. Um, and this is a project in India where they have taken many, many, many manuscripts across India and they have made a project of, of digitally scanning them and putting them up. Um, this is a central library. Um, it is an ISO certified library as they have put in their email uh, under ISO 9001 2015 and so on and so on. So. Uh, I emailed them about this manuscript and if there were any other historic documentation that they had. Um, after a long time of me waiting and sending additional emails, I got a response from them. And they said, thank you for your question about the manuscript Kisatul uh, Sakarwati Farmant. There is a digital copy of the translation from the Israel Oriental Studies Journal by Dr. Yunan Friedman. So there's actually a translation. Um, they, we say we do not house the original manuscript as it is housed in the British Library in London, which is the first people that I had contacted. As for the record of a king named Shakarwati Farmas, also pr uh, pronounced Farmad, uh, and his observation of the splitting of the moon and later embracing Islam, then this is well documented in many manuscripts that are housed in the National Digital Library of India. The name Sharaman uh, Purumal, uh, and I may be mispronouncing this, is a title that is often ascribed to kings who ruled Kerala from the Chera dynasty before 1000 AD. Um, after 1000 AD, they were called Kula Shirokaras. So just the fact that that title was named under Chiriman shows that this was a very early report and an early writing. Now, uh, according to their email, they said there are numerous oral and written traditions that state that Chiraman Purmal, the Chira king, called Shanakkara Varman and Shakarmati, with the title of Chiringal Purmal, sorry, I'm probably butchering these names, but who ruled from 621 to 640, and again, that would put him exactly at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, early time. Yani, because the Hijrah was around 622, so that would mean that his rule would be right before the migration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, witnessed the splitting of the moon. And when he met Muslim traders, he converted to Islam, uh, according to these reports, and, and they will mention books here, in 627. Um, this is recorded in Tariq Suhoor al-Islam fil Malibar, uh, an early manuscript on the genesis of Islam in Kerala, housed in the digital uh, library, and they give the manuscript number here. This is supported by what is documented in the book Tuhfatul Mujahideen by Sheikh uh, Zainuddin, who was, and this was also confirmed by Dr. Herman uh, Gundrit, a German Christian missionary, scholar, and linguist. Uh, this is also, his work is in the digital library and they've given the manuscript number here as well. Dr. German uh, Gundrit speaks of two Chera kings who went to Mecca, uh, Shankarwan Marma uh, during the first century of Islam and Rama Varma Kulashkankaram in the later, who would also be called under the title of Sherman Pirmal. Um, this account is also, in fact, uh, recorded uh, by the Portuguese writer Dorte Barbosa. And we have a manuscript here in the digital library for that as well. He writes about a mighty king named Cherman Purmal who ruled Kerala, converting to Islam, and ordered the Cherman Mosque, which is still standing in India.
This was built in 629 AD after the death of Chirman Parmal, who died in the Arabian Peninsula, according to these reports. This is also confirmed by another Portuguese writer named Johas de Barros and Diogo Alcortos. Both of them have confirmed these events as well in their historic writings that have been uh, recorded in manuscripts that are in the digital library. He ends this email with, In India, it is well-known part of our history, and the accounts of Chera kings who witnessed the splitting of the moon is well accepted as a historically proven record with oral and written traditions. Other historic events of them as recorded in al Saba of Ibn Hajar. Now, this is the end of the email from the National Digital Library of India Project, Central Library. They gave the ISO certification, phone number and contact report uh, up on the screen by Ibn Hajar Asqalani. In summary, when we look at an extraordinary claim, no doubt we have provided here extraordinary evidence, eyewitnesses, and, and not just eyewitnesses, those that were proponents and opponents, those that were in the same city of Mecca and those that were outside of Mecca. Those, those reports are all eyewitness first-hand reports that have been verified and documented. On top of that, we have seen reports that are historically acceptable. They do not meet the level of criterion that, that Islamic scholars have for checking of Jarh wa Ta'deel, but they are acceptable reports, historic reports out of India of multiple sources that orally and, and in written format have documented that there was a king in India that witnessed this and later accepted Islam. The mosque that was built, and there's a picture of the mosque here, it is still standing. It has been through fires and so on. But it is such a well accepted fact that this mosque was built by that king after his accepting of Islam, after his witnessing the splitting of the moon, that even the Prime Minister of India made a gold replica of it to give a gift to the king of Saudi Arabia showing the history of Islam in India. And there's a picture of this that I've put on the screen here for you to see. All the information about the kings of India and what happened during that time frame have been accepted through such reports. So this collaborated by the eyewitness accounts in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that are no doubt verified, show clear evidence. There is more evidence presented here than for most of history. Columbus uh, coming to South America and where he landed and what happened between him and the Incas and the Aztecs and so on. Who, who were the eyewitnesses to these accounts? Who did they tell this account to? Who were their parents? Who were their children? How reliable was their memory? We don't know. Because of those oral traditions, because of writings that are way after them, we accept these accounts. So what I say, is when you have eyewitness accounts, people who were verified that saw this, proponents, companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also opponents, polytheists, not only that they were present there, but in other parts of Arabia that saw this event. And not just that, even when this claim was put forward, none of the polytheists for years after that, that were present, ever challenged it. None of them said, when did the moon split? It's in your Qur'an, your Prophet said it, we didn't see it. No, they accepted that it happened, but they made excuses, it was magic, it was this or that, but they accepted it, that this miraculous event did happen. And collaborating evidence, historic evidence from India, as this non-Muslim historian, he's a Hindu, from India has confirmed that this is accepted history through many manuscripts, many writings, oral traditions. When we have all of this together, then no doubt this was an event that occurred. And this was a miracle of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And we encourage everybody who's a skeptic, everybody who wants to question, to go out and read more about the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because the greatest miracle of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the Qur'an is still with us. Take it, read it. The life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, read about it. His other miracles, read about it. And let them be a guiding, guiding force for you.